to step this way. I want to reveal to you the mysteries of my trade. What do you think that is? A uh, Dardanus nun? Wrong. This little lady is the representative of my employer. How do you do, Log? Watch. That is Zen. My existence at this moment on this spot is now trapped and recorded. 23 moments, 23 sights every two hours. That's my job. Well, could they not train a tall chimpanzee to do that? Or a small chimpanzee with a bigger gizmo? I expect they could, yes. What's your name, son? Brian. Hello, Brian. Johnny. Well, Brian, congratulations. You've succeeded in convincing me that you do have the most tedious fucking job in England. Come on. Yes, it is a boring job. <laughs> Bloody boring, actually. All right, Sally. Right. But all you can see is the tip of the iceberg, the present, the tedious here and now. What you're incapable of seeing is the rest of time, the rest of the iceberg, the past and the future, my future, which is a very interesting place to be. And the thing about this job is that it gives me time and space to contemplate the future at my leisure, whilst the city sleeps, free from the cacophonous curiosity of the hoi polloi. So you see, it's not a boring job. And I'm not boring either. Am I allowed to smoke on the stairs? No, there's alarm all over the building. So you think you can make the present palatable by projecting into the future? You're living in the past, pal. It's the future that fucks you up, Brian. It's the, the maggot in the apple. You see, you're all pissed off with a present, right? And there's nothing wrong with the present. The present's fine. The present's perfect. The present's peachy fucking creamy. The only thing wrong with the present is the bastard doesn't exist. Because the present is the future, and the future is the past. And it's all the same fucking bag of bones anyway. It's a constant process of coming into being and passing away, coming into being and passing away. The future is now. But the present does exist. We're in it now. You were just then when you said it, but you're not in it now. You're not in it now. You're not in it now. You're forever being kicked up the ass by the future. You with me? That's what I mean. You see, I'm in the present. But I'm not in the present. I'm in the future. Exactly. Has nobody not told you, Brian, that you've got this kind of gleeful preoccupation with the future? I wouldn't even mind, but you don't even have a fucking future. I don't have a future. Nobody has a future. The party's over. Take a look around you, man. It's all breaking up. Are you not familiar with the book of Revelations of St John, the final book of the Bible, prophesying the apocalypse? Yes, as it happens, I'm familiar with all the books of the Bible. I'm very happy for you. He forced everyone to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead so that no one shall be able to buy or sell unless he has the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. And the number of the beast is 666. Six, 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 six. I know about it. Great. I know about Nostradamus. Nostradamus talked about three brothers. Now, did he mean the Kennedy brothers or was he talking about three bits of the Soviet Union? You see, you just can't tell. Fuck Nostradamus. I'm not talking about Nostradamus, a mother shipped and a Russell Grant, a mystic fucking Meg. I'm talking about the holy fucking book. What can such a specific prophecy mean? What is the mark? Well, the mark, Brian, is the barcode, the ubiquitous barcode that you'll find on every bog roll and every packet of Johnny's and every poxy pork pie. And every fucking barcode is divided into two parts by three markers. And those three markers are always represented by the number six, 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 six. Now, what does it say? No one shall be able to buy or sell without that mark. And now, what they're planning to do in order to eradicate all credit card fraud and in order to precipitate a totally cashless society, what they're planning to do, what they've already tested on the American troops, they're going to subcutaneously laser tattoo that mark onto your right hand or onto your forehead. They're going to replace plastic with flesh. Fact. In the same book of Revelations, when the seven seals are broken open on the day of judgment and the seven angels blow the trumpets, when the third angel blows her bugle, wormwood will fall from the sky. Wormwood will poison a third part of all the waters and a third part of all the land, and many, many, many people will die. Now, do you know what the Russian translation for wormwood is? No. Chernobyl. Fact. On August the 18th, 1999, the planets of our solar system are going to line up into the shape of a cross. I don't believe in astrology. I'm not talking about astrology. I'm talking about astronomy. 
They're going to line up in the fixed signs of Aquarius, Leo, Taurus, and Scorpio, which just happen to correspond to the four beasts of the apocalypse, as mentioned in the book of Daniel. Another fucking fact. Do you want me to go on? The end of the world is nigh, bride. The game is up. I don't believe that. Life can't just come to a stop. All right, I'm not saying that life will end or the world will end or the universe will cease to exist, but man will cease to exist. Just like the dinosaurs passed into extinction, the same thing will happen to us. We're not fucking important. We're just a crap idea. I'm not going to cease to exist. I'm going to be here in the future. What is this fucking fixation with the future? Listen, pal, I've got chronic systolic palpitations and acute fucking neuralgia. What about these toilets? Can I smoke in here? No, you fucking can't. Let me ask you a question. What? Have you ever had the sense that you've lived in a time different from this one? What, you mean like in a past life? Could be, yeah. Yeah, well, in my past life, I was dead. Oh, you see, I wasn't. I know I was here in the past before I was born. So I know I'm going to be here in the future after I've died. I see. And in this alternative existence, did you still have the same noxious body odour? It's nothing to be personal. It's what I believe. Shall I tell you what I believe? You don't believe in anything. Oh, I do, Brian. Yeah? What do you believe? Do you think that the amoeba ever dreamed that it would evolve into the frog? Of course it didn't. And when that first frog shimmied out of the water and employed its vocal cords in order to attract a mate or to retard a predator, do you think that that frog ever imagined that that incipient croak would evolve into all the languages of the world, into all the literature of the world? Of course it fucking didn't. And just as that froggy could never possibly have conceived of as Shakespeare, so we can never possibly imagine our destiny. I know what my destiny is. Yeah, but what you're experiencing, as far as I can gather, with all these manifestations of uh, regression and precognition and transmigratory astral fucking chatterings, is just the equivalent of that first primeval grunt. Because evolution isn't over. Man isn't the be-all and fucking end-all. Look, if you take the whole of time represented by one year, we're only in the first few moments of the 1st of January. There's a long way to go. Only now we're not going to sprout extra limbs and wings and fins because evolution itself is evolving. And whereas you, through some process of extra sensory recall, might imagine that you were some, I don't know, some 17th century little Dutch girl living in a windmill in Old Amsterdam, one day you'll realise that you've had not just one or two past or future existences, but that you were and are everybody and everything that has ever been or will ever be. Hang on a minute. You've just contradicted yourself. Oh, and how do you make that out? Downstairs, you were predicting the end of the world. Now you're talking about the future. How do you explain that, eh? Easy. When it comes, the apocalypse itself will be part of the process of that leap of evolution. Yeah. Well, whatever happens, mankind will not cease to exist. It must. By the very definition of apocalypse, mankind must cease to exist, at least in a material form. What do you mean, in a material form? Well, it'll evolve. What into? Into something that transcends matter, into a species of pure thought. Are you with me? Yeah. Like a ghost. <laughs> no, not like a fucking ghost, your big girl's blouse. Into something that's, like, well beyond our comprehension. Into a universal consciousness. Into God, who is, by the same principle, that time is. You don't believe in God. Of course I believe in God. You see, the thing is, Brian, that God is a hateful God. Must be. Because if God is good, then why is the evil in the world? Why is the pain and hate and greed and war? Doesn't make sense. But if God is a nasty bastard, then you can say, why is the good in the world? Why is the love and hope and joy? Well, let's face it, good exists in order to be fucked up by evil. The very existence of good enables evil to flourish. Therefore, God is bad. And it doesn't matter how many past or future existences you have, because they're all going to be riddled with grief and anguish and sickness and death. You see, Brian, God doesn't love you. God despises you. So there's no hope. 
and mankind is just a component of the device by which the devil creates itself. You with me? You see, what I'm saying basically is you can't make an omelette without cracking a few eggs and humanity is just a cracked egg and the omelette stinks. <laughs>